welcome to Mississippi State's College of Veterinary Medicine's virtual open house. My name is Carly Campbell and I'm the president of the American Association of Equine Practitioners student chapter. Today I have Nova with me to demonstrate a few anatomical things that we'll be going over in your coloring sheet, your crossword, and a few other little activities we've got planned for you. Go. When approaching a horse you always want to approach from their shoulder. This is their shoulder and going up from here this is their crest. Her mane is on her other side. Down here is the point of her shoulder. Going up, we have her jugular groove. You can see here. Um, up toward the top of the head, we have her pole. This is where the bridle will sit and go over. Coming down, we have her cheeks. And then we also have a facial crest, which is this bony structure right here under their eye. It's important when fitting a halter bridle to not bump that. Um, and this is their chin groove, and obviously their lips and nostrils. Coming back to the shoulder, up here we have her withers, and this is where the saddle will sit from the withers back. And then we have their barrel, they're the substance. Um, underneath we have the belly, and then coming down the front leg, we've got their elbow, their forearm, their knee is what a lot of people call this, but it's actually a carpus. It's equivalent to our wrist. Then we have their cannon with some tendons on the back here. And then so after the cannon, we have three bones that go into the hoof. First, we have the long pastern, a short pastern, and what we call P1, or commonly known as the coffin bone. There's also a little tiny bone back there called the navicular that's inside the hoof. Once we look under the foot, we can see that they have what's called a frog. This is this structure right here. These are her heels, and then this is the hoof capsule. So coming from the spine, after the withers, we have their hip, which will be here. We'll start at the hip bone. We'll come down here. This is their knee, which is also known as the stifle. And then as we come down, we have their hock, which is kind of like our ankle. And then we also have a cannon on the back leg. And then the same long pastern, short pastern, and coffin bone down here. Okay, so Nova here is going to help us demonstrate how to pick up a hook. So you'll grab right here and pinch. And most horses will go ahead and pick their foot up. And if they don't, you can go a little lower and pinch a little harder, and they'll pick it right up. Now when you go to hold the foot, Put your hand down here so you can stabilize it, but try not to grab the hairs because it usually will pinch them and they're not super comfy. But you can hold like this and get to going on whatever you're doing. Hi, I'm going to show you how to hold a lead rope when it's attached to a horse. So a lot of people with all this rope tend to wrap it in the wrong way or hold it in the wrong way. And when they go to hold it, they usually just start gathering up rope so they don't have so much and it ends up with something like this. Now, if I go to pull and she is pulling and getting scared, now I've gotten my hand in a bind and it's going to pull and this can break fingers or hands or wrists or pull you down and cause other injuries. So the proper way to hold a lead rope, when you take it up, the easiest way is to fold it in half and maybe even a half again if it's too long. This way, if she goes to pull, I can drop this in and I've still got a hand on the lead rope and if she keeps pulling, it'll just pull it out of my hand without grasping my hand. And that's how to safely hold a lead rope. Thank you for your interest in Mississippi State College of Veterinary Medicine's virtual open house. This is Carly Campbell, president of AEP, signing off. We hope to see you in person as soon as is possible. And we hope you enjoy the activities that go along with this video. Thank you.